road to glory Driven since I was a child They tell you life is a game But it ain't a game to me The lights are calling my name Yeah, I got the energy To put it all on the line When we're free to move, anything is possible. My name is Garrison Red. I'm the founder of the Garrison Red Project, and I'm here today to bring you another episode of the Disability News Report. First, I would like to start by providing you with a quote. That quote is, change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. And that's how we're going to start the show today. Okay, so what I did some research and there's some interesting news out there. A lot of good things that are going on currently. There's a rock band by the name of Flame and they celebrate the ability and disability. What was reported is that the next time someone says disabled people aren't able to do the same things as people who are able-bodied, Tell them the story of Andrew Carpenter. Carpenter uses music and singing to express himself and says what many consider as a disability is an actual gift. They don't understand that a disability you're born with is like a superpower in a way. Carpenter said last Saturday, it brings out a special part of you that no one else has. Carpenter is a part of the rock band Flame, an internationally renowned group who has performed not just across the U.S., but in Europe and Japan as well. All of the members of the band have a disability, and they were brought to perform at Tioga Downs by Lions Bagger Camp, a summer camp where participants also all have special needs. That's very intriguing and amazing, you know, to bring together a group of individuals who all share one common issue, which is having a disability and showing the world that they are able to perform just like any other group. That's very inspiring. And I wish the best of luck to the rock group Flame. Here's some international news coming out of Pakistan. All disabled people should get disability certificates. Saeed Kasim Naved, Special Assistant to CM Cindy on Department of Empowerment of Persons with Disabilities, Saeed Kasim Naveed Kumar, while presiding over a meeting here in his office, has asked all disabled people to obtain disability certificates. Contact an office of the Provisional Council for Rehabilitation of People which is situated at Block 20 FB area, adjacent to Ibrahim Ali Bahi Girls School near Sambi Police Station. Director PCRDP and other officers are also attending this particular meeting. The meeting was informed that the disabled people could submit their applications in their respective rehabilitation centers in all 27 districts across the province, and that at these centers, they will be provided medical board facilities in local hospitals and will be issued a disability certificate. While addressing the meeting, Special Assistant to SM Cindy on Department of Empowerment of Persons with Disability, Saeed Kwasim Navid Komar directed the officers to help the disabled people in registering complaints to abide the provision of facilities and rights of all disabled persons and ensure that their grievances must be addressed properly. Now, I mean, this is really big, especially in countries such as Pakistan, Middle Eastern, somewhat third world countries, in that they are giving people with disabilities an opportunity 
such as in America, how we have Social Security disability benefits. That way they could get the proper medical coverage. They could get rehabilitation for their disability, which is going to be ultimately beneficial for them. Now, in the Austin Daily Herald the other day, there was a nice um, article in regards to Minnesotans, people from Minnesota. And what's going on is that building a competitive workforce to support people with disabilities. The Best Life Alliance 2019 legislative proposal ends a destabilizing cut to community-based disability service rates due to federal action. The bill takes steps to address the severe workforce shortage impacting the critical supports accessed by over 30,000 Minnesotans with disabilities to live and work in their communities. 32,000 Minnesotans with disabilities rely on community-based services to live their best lives, 95% of which are paid for by medical assistance. Payment rates for these services are set by the state and directly affect staff wages. Communications between the federal and state government in February 2018 resulted in a cut to the reimbursement for community-based disability services by 7%, greatly destabilizing an already unstable system. This was not a legislative action and state law still allocates this funding as legislators intended to Minnesotans with disabilities. Legislation addressing this critical issue of preserving access to the community-based disability services is unfinished business and should be moved immediately. It received broad bipartisan by Camaral support during the 2018 legislative session and was included in the final omnibus supplemental spending bill that eventually vetoed by Governor Dayton. So for those of you who don't know, disability payments for individuals that are unemployed is very, very crucial and important. So that way individuals will be able to sustain a daily lifestyle. For instance, you know, they have goods that they have to purchase for their needs, not only medical needs, but just for their daily living needs. So hopefully they will be able to rectify this situation very shortly. Now, from the Washington Post, there was a tragic incident on a New York subway, and this incident occurred last week where a lady who was carrying a baby with a stroller fell to her death and died. However, that tragic New York subway death didn't surprise many people with disabilities, and this article was by Kara Leibowitz. Carol Leibowitz is a disabled activist and writer who works as the development coordinator for the National Council on Independent Living, a national grassroots disability rights organization. She states, two years ago, I came to the painful conclusion that New York City didn't want me. For someone with cerebral palsy who relies on a power wheelchair, a walker, or crutches to get around, the city is distinctively unfriendly. I don't drive because of my disability and only a quarter of NYC subway stations have elevators. Add that to the need of for affordable housing and the vision she always had of herself as a trendy New Yorker who would at some point move out of her parents' house on Long Island and commute to a nice job in the city evaporated into thin air. So she packed up her life and moved to the Washington area. She states, every day I take the metro to work and marvel at the accessibility. Every single station has an elevator. So I'm never worried about whether the stop I'm going to be will be accessible. Metro still has accessibility issues, including elevators that are frequently broken for weeks or months at a time, an issue I spoke about at a recent Metro board meeting. But the mere existence of elevators at every stop puts the D.C. Metro a notch above the NYC subway. It's a truly pathetic standard, but it's the standard we have to judge by nonetheless. Knowing what I do about the inaccessibility of New York subway state system, I was saddened but not surprised when I heard about Malaysia Godson, a 22-year-old mother who died late last month while trying to haul her 
one year old and a stroller down the steps of a midtown subway station. What did surprise me was the outpouring of attention the incident received from panicked media outlets, quoting parents on the need for subway elevators to politicians vowing to make the system more accessible. I can't help but feel a little bit bitter that it took the death of a pre assembly able-bodied, presumably able-bodied mother for people to start paying attention to the inaccessibility. And I agree with her. Um, just as a testament on my behalf, I used to travel to Dykeman to the armory to compete in shot put at one point. And often the train station I would have to get off at, the elevator was always out of service. Meaning I would have to travel to the next stop, hoping that the elevator would be in service. And that stop was approximately 12 blocks up a steep hill. I mean, going down is not an issue, but going back up to that subway station proposed a major issue for me in which I overcame it. However, a lot of individuals who do not have great upper body strength and push manual wheelchairs, it would be quite cumbersome and difficult, especially during the New York winter. So hopefully, I hope there are changes. Um, one thing I can tell you is that the New York subway system is one of the oldest subway systems in the world. So that's not making an excuse for them for not to be uh, more accessible. However, it proposes a challenge as well to create, you know, all the stations to be more accessible at the current moment. However, they can make more of an effort. Next, you know, it's Super Bowl weekend, so... Super Bowl at Star Kids with Disabilities. A commercial airing during the Super Bowl will feature a group of children with disabilities and hype a product geared toward them. Microsoft said it will run an advertisement during the fourth quarter of Sunday's big game on CBS promoting its Xbox adaptive controller. A version of the spot that's already available online shows children with various disabilities and their parents talking about how the adaptive device has helped level the playing field. During the Super Bowl, a condensed 60 second version will air. So I encourage everyone to check out that commercial um, on YouTube. You could just um, pretty much search for it by using Microsoft Adaptive Controller. Now this is a heartwarming article I came across. Boy abandoned at birth because he has no limbs is an inspiration to everyone he meets. Gentleman by the name of Gabe Adams was born in Brazil without any arms or legs. As an infant, he was abandoned by his mother and ended up at an orphanage. And that's when his life took yet another dramatic turn. Word of a limbless baby traveled to North America and reached Janelle Adams in Utah. When she saw Gabe's photo in a grocery store, she told herself, I'll take him in a second. And that's when she realized she needed to be Gabe's mother. Flash forward several years, and this remarkable young boy has become an inspiration to everyone he meets. His parents push them hard, but they do it so he can be independent and have freedom and choices in his life. He is currently a break dancer, and you can check him out on YouTube. He's truly amazing. I actually watched a couple of his videos and I'm intrigued at some of the things he can do. So definitely take a look at him and, you know, leave, drop him a comment, search for him on um, Instagram or Twitter and reach out to him. He's a very inspiring individual. Now, off to another great article I stumbled across. A woman is making disability inclusion a leadership issue. Meet Carolyn Casey. Her company is valuable. Ring a bell? That's probably because this longtime rebel is absolutely fine with courting controversy and even happier making news globally for doing so. Her latest act of rebellion is asking 500 companies to put disability inclusion on their board agenda and take action on some aspect of it in 2019. The campaign is called the Viable 500. The time is now, she explains. 
the one billion people globally who are disabled can't find work. Need top leaders to take action now. The day I spoke with Casey from Davos, Switzerland at the World Economic Forum, she was pumped, passionate, and admittedly a little nervous. She had set a huge goal to get 500 companies boards to put inclusion on their agendas. Launched a fairly controversial video campaign titled Dervish. I'm going to provide you a little more on that in a little bit. And made several renowned leaders tear up on stage. While she may not be the first or the only leader to push for inclusion, she came to Davos armed with everything she needed to be a catalyst for change. New research, big name backers, and lot lived experience. Casey is registered blind. Although she says her parents didn't tell her until she was a teenager, I guess they felt I didn't need to have the stigma attached to me. And just to make sure I felt like every other kid, they sent me to ride about town on a bicycle. Who does that? At the risk of creating a ridiculous metaphor, I'll tell you what I told a colleague about Casey when I hung up the phone. This woman is like the lead car in a motorcade. Her job is to drive the initiative forward and clear the path for leadership. She seems literally unstoppable. While many businesses call themselves diverse, most overlook, ignore, or delay take action on inclusion. She says employment numbers for people with disabilities are rising according to recent reports. Still, the numbers are at unacceptably low. Only 20% of people with disabilities are currently employed. And I really spoke big about that topic on my TED Talk titled Life is Like a Lemonade, where I spoke how inclusion does not include individuals with disability in which it should. I mean, individual disability accounts for a part of an economy just like any other group of individuals. And there should be something done about the employment rate. That way, individuals such as myself can make a living doing the things they like to do just like anyone else. And to end the night um, and end the show, I also would like to, you know, give you a little bit of updates. Um, I will be on the panel for an event called Break, uh, Take a Heart, which will be at the Fashion Institute of Technology, February 8th at 6 p.m. And we will speak about disability and finding love and things of that nature. Um, it's an opportunity for individuals to ask questions that they have in regards to individuals with disabilities and romance. Also, I have a powerlifting meet coming up February 18th. So most likely I will be recording from Virginia. And it'll give you just a different um, scenery. As well as there's a lot of um, big things happening currently in politics. Hopefully, you know, disabled individuals will see, will be heard more and receive more rights. As far as the Garrison Reddit Project, I do encourage individuals to continue to donate. Um, we accept medical equipment. We accept advice. We accept intellectual um, gifts as well as far as, you know, suggestions and things of that nature. That's very important to us. So that way we can know what individuals need more of, where can we, you know, position ourselves and things we can look into for 2019, you know, so that way we can provide more assistance to the disabled community. Also, um, we got a lot of big events planning, so stay tuned to them. And I just want to give people a brief talk about how to stay motivated and achieving their goals. Um, I feel that a lot of individuals sometimes get off track or get overwhelmed. And I'm here to assure you that is okay. Um, sometimes we throw forks in the road and we just have to get over them. I mean, there's two ways you could go. You could go left or you could go the right way. 
and typically you know individuals get off track and make a detour and might go left when you could just continue to go right sometimes it take a little while longer to get something so far ahead but just know that every journey there's a process with that journey that comes along with it so i just want everybody to keep striving towards their goals and aspirations don't worry if you don't see the results right away that's not an issue that means that there's something big boiling in the background and it's just going to take a little bit more time. So if anybody wants to reach out to me, my Instagram is Big Money G with two Y's as well as the Garrison Red Project Instagram. Also, you can look me up Garrison Red on Facebook, Garrison Red on LinkedIn, as well as the Garrison Red Project on Facebook. And also I have a group, the Garrison Red Project group. Um, strength is num strength is numbers. So the more people that join, the more ways I could spread awareness out to the universe. That way we could create keep creating a positive atmosphere for individuals with disabilities and individuals that are able bodied as well. That's one thing um, we do with the Garrison Rep Project group. I have all types of individuals um, that promote a variety of things, whether it's modeling, whether it's fitness. Um, it's just an inclusive environment where everybody could discuss different um, aspects of their life and which could be beneficial to anybody else. So until next time, stay blessed, stay humbled, and keep striving towards your aspirations. Have a good night, everyone. Yo, G, do me a favor. Yeah. Pick that ball right there on your way to the, to the pull-ups. Steady. Don't help him. Leave him. Leave him. Leave him. Leave him. Leave him. What's in your way? Nah, 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 nah. Come on, G. Take your time. Uh-huh. Left leg. Take your time. Four steps each step. Uh huh. Take your time. Come on. You're almost here, come on. Take your time, G. Let's go. Now come, come on. You almost there. Uh -huh.